Okay, thanks for returning. What about the plethora? We've been talking, by the way, of earning money from anywhere, being location neutral. And I now ask this, what about the plethora of home-based business opportunities? Now, many of these opportunities take the form of what is called multi-level marketing or network marketing. And I know the moment that folks hear that, 85% of the population wants to walk away because 85% of the population wants nothing to do with it. And I believe it's because of the strategy that network marketing companies have used now for 50 years. Hey, it's Tuesday night, what are you doing? Let's go over to the Holiday Inn, listen to some guy dressed up to the nines, tell us about how much money he's making in XYZ program and how you can do it too. And everybody gets into that get rich quick mentality and nobody, most people, want nothing to do with that. And I'm with you 100%. I want nothing to do with that strategy. For myself, I've become a, uh, well, adept. I don't want to use the word expert, but I've become adept at internet marketing and video marketing. And that, I believe, is an important key to success. But let's look at the facts. The world has changed, and because the world has changed, because we are all so connected, that's what makes internet marketing and video marketing a possibility or having great potential for you being able to run a business from your RV or from your sticks and bricks home. All right, That's absolutely possible. And again, because all you really need is a cell phone and an email address, you don't need to be anywhere specific. So that's where the idea of being location neutral comes in. But let's also be real. Even today, 98 to 99 percent, 98 to 99 percent of all people who get involved in home-based businesses slash network marketing slash multi-level marketing fail. 98 to 99 percent. So it makes you wonder, why would you ever bother doing that? Well, I claim that a lot of that failure is a result of how they go about doing business using the business model that a lot of these companies teach and that leads to failure for the vast majority of people. <clears throat> or the company they choose to affiliate with because of the product or the service that the company offers. Now, I'm going to get very specific here. I'm going to give you a lot of information over the next few minutes, so bear with me. I ask first, when somebody brings a quote-unquote opportunity to me, I ask, is the income primarily from recruiting or is there a real market or product for the service being offered now I primarily ask myself that question I don't necessarily ask the person who's bringing that to me that question alright I ask myself that and I then go out and do some research or use a little bit of God-given common sense to assess is there a product for the market or uh, for the product or service a market for the product or service that um, is being presented to me or is this just one of those things where you go out and get three which by the way statistically most people can't do you go out and get three and yours is free so who cares what it is <laughs> hello does that make any sense to you it doesn't make any sense to me what makes far more sense to me is if you're asking me to promote a widget if you're asking me if you will to sell a widget then I need to know that there's a market for that widget and I need to know that there is um, that that widget that you want me to offer is competitive I need to know that it's priced right or it's got the right quality to it or some combination thereof that makes it what I call a high-value best-in-class product or service does that just make sense <clears throat> so consider for example Walmart now, when you walk into a Walmart or any retailer, if for some reason you don't like Walmart, pick your favorite retailer. I don't care if it's Home Depot or if it's Macy's or Nordstrom's. You walk into a retailer <clears throat> and what you see is a wealth of products that they offer. Now, those products got there because there was a buyer working for that department that looked at a variety of similar widgets and picked that one to be in their stores. Now, why'd they pick it? They picked it because they believe that there's a market for it. In other words, there are people that want that thing. I don't care if it's a dish towel or if it's a, uh, uh, if it's a hose uh, or if it's a battery. I don't care what it is. There is a buyer that said there's a market for that. 
the buyer also looked at it and said, are we going to be able to get it at a price where we can offer it to the public at a price where they'll buy it? Because that's important, isn't it? Isn't it important to be able to offer at a competitive price? Now, I know there are some things. You can walk in and buy a shirt at Walmart, and you can buy a shirt at Macy's, and you'll probably pay three times the price at Macy's. And a lot of people will opt to do that. Why? It's probably a better shirt. <laughs> and that's okay. That's why I say best in class or high value does not necessarily mean the cheapest thing in existence. Now, what Walmart knows is that 100% of their income, of their profit, is going to happen from the sale of that product, not from recruiting anybody to go out and become an outside salesperson <coughs> to promote that product. Forgive me if my voice is going a little bit. I'm uh, leaving Casper today. The weather has been horrendous. It snowed all day yesterday, and I'm recording this on the 12th of May. And I'm not in the mountains. This is only 5,200 feet elevation. So it is a little bit of a challenge uh, being out here. I'm going to be traveling about 100 miles west, and I expect the weather to gradually get better over the next two, three, four days, I hope. Um, so Walmart knows that in order for money to be made, money has to be spent. Somebody's got to see value in the product or a service it could be, and then trade in their hard-earned money for that product. <clears throat> and Walmart will then... Um, earn money, which enables them to, of course, pay the bills, which includes their sales force, which is how people uh, earn a living by working for Walmart or other companies. And again, uh, I'm only using them as an example. Uh, if you don't like Walmart, just substitute that name for some other. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. Now, whenever I'm approached with an opportunity, I don't look at the compensation plan or the marketing plan first. That's not important to me. What, what is most important to me is that product. Is that product high value? Does anybody want it? And is this the product they'll want at the price that it's going to be charged for? All right? Is this the product that they'll want at the price that you have to charge? So that, to me, is a, a marker of whether or not this is something I'm even going to consider. And I should even add, is the product even safe? I'll give you an example. The network marketing industry, the Again, I don't care if you call it multi-level marketing, network marketing, home-based business. You've got weight loss stuff, get healthy drinks, uh, virtual doctors, discount prescription programs, alternate energy companies, hemp and medical marijuana products now, and HYIP deals where you get 2% interest per day on your money. Let's just look at some of these fairly critically. Weight loss stuff? If you Google the ingredients in most of the weight loss stuff and look up what the ingredients really are, you'll find out you're trading off one problem for another. You might lose weight, but you might also find out that you're ingesting something which is no good for you and could create problems down the road. How about you? But I'd rather use the old tried and true method, push aways and do a little bit more exercise. I'm proud to announce that I went pant shopping the other day and for the first time a 40 waist is actually in sight. I'm fitting 40 waist pants, and I want to bring that down to 38, 36, and even 34 over time. How did I do it? I cut cookies out of my diet, and I got more active. I don't need weight loss stuff. So you need to look at what the category is, whether or not you want to be involved with it. Get healthy drinks. I'll tell you a quick story that's going to blow your mind. My brother at one point was thinking about marketing a get healthy drink of his own choosing. He found a company, and it turns out it's the company that bottles for about 150 different companies. You give them $15,000, they'll put any mix of stuff in the bottle and slap a label on it, and they really don't care what's in there. So what gets marketed and promoted to you is the latest, greatest jungle juice. The miracle juice from blah, blah, blah is really just something somebody cooked up in their kitchen as an idea with a mix of ingredients, and they slap it together and create a marketing campaign around it. You want to promote that? I don't. I don't want anything to do with that. Virtual doctors. A friend of mine was talking to me about this the other day. Virtual doctors. Well, there are virtual doctor programs, but you know what? There are also now legitimate real doctors that are starting up concierge medicine practices. And I would encourage you, you've got to compare. What are you actually getting from a virtual MLM doctor company versus a concierge medicine company 
that uh, the doctors will be willing to do video conferences and for that matter home uh, home calls if uh, you need. So that's something to think about. You've got to look at the competition and it's got to be able to stand up as I say in the open market meaning that people are going to look at Amazon, people are going to look at Walmart, people are going to look at other companies or other opportunities out there and does what you want to promote to them stand up when it's compared to all those things. If it doesn't I wouldn't want anything to do with it. Let me move along here and uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to share my phone number because if you want to consult with me, if you want to have a conversation, say, Alan, you know, I've been thinking about this and I've been looking at this world or I'm looking at internet marketing, I'm looking at video marketing and maybe there's something we can work out. Give me a call. 561-676-1205. I'm in the mountain time zone. I'm pretty much staying in the Intermountain West. So please honor that time zone, meaning GMT minus 7. All right? So once again, 561-676-1205. few more thoughts and then we're done. There's three key problems to a lot of network marketing companies out there, and I've already touched on a little bit of this. The product is just junk. It's somebody that's somebody decided to bottle, create a marketing campaign around it, create some kind of fancy schmancy compensation plan, and then um, they go out and promote it. And then people fall for it. Well, people have been falling for this stuff for thousands of years. Remember the snake oil from the uh, 1800s? I always get a kick out of that. And a lot of this stuff is no different from that. I also love those 2% per day HYIP programs. Loan sharks don't charge 2% a day, many of them. And if you are making more than a loan shark, where is that money coming from? And the answer is nowhere. And that's why a lot of those companies go under. You've got to use this thing up here when you're looking at those kind of programs to say, wait a minute, there's something probably wrong. With a lot of products from network marketing companies, the product is simply overpriced. People live in an open market. I mentioned that a moment ago. They can go to Amazon. So if you're promoting to them a, uh, I don't know, weight loss product, or if you're promoting them to them colloidal silver, well, and that's that silver lotion, silver, silver liquid, um, they can go to Amazon. And what do you think the difference is between your product and theirs? If your answer was nothing, you're right. And if Amazon is half the price, who do you think they're going to buy from? And if they did join your opportunity, you recruited them with the idea that they're going to keep this auto ship going and you're going to keep making money. After a month or two of that, they're going to wake up and say, no, thank you. The third problem is they come up with ideas. These companies come up with ideas where there's a very limited market. And then the reality is you've got to ask yourself, who's going to buy this stuff? So as you can see, most ideas fail at my first filter. I don't even go on to looking at the compensation plan or the marketing. People say, oh, you've got to see this great video. You've got to look at how much money you can make. Money's not going to get made if product doesn't get sold. Something's got to get purchased in order for money to be made. That's a simple truism in life. Well, are there, you might be now, by now, asking, are there any network marketing companies, multi-level marketing, home-based business companies that make any sense at all? And the answer is, yeah, there are a few. And I'm not going to pitch you on my choice. You can contact me if you want to talk, and I'll explain to you what I do and why I do it. And it's only a part of my income. But there are a few out there. Frankly, I'm thinking nowadays there might only be one, but there are a few. Let's acknowledge that. And you have to ask yourself, if you join a network marketing company and they're going to charge you to join, what value are they giving you? What are you getting for your money? What are they delivering to you? It's your hard-earned money, and you have a right to ask that question. You also need to look into what are the IRS rules regarding being in a home-based business and how might that be something of value to you in terms of providing you with a way to write off some of your expenses, but they got to be legitimate business expenses. So don't think that you're just joining an MLM to be a tax dodge. That's not going to work. Then you have to ask yourself, how are you going to market it? And that's why I mentioned at the outset, video marketing, internet marketing, I believe that's the future. I'm certainly not running around campgrounds asking people, what are you doing on Tuesday night? Let's all hold a meeting so I can pitch you on something. Uh Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. And are you planning on turning all of your family and friends into prospects? I don't believe in that either. But believe it or not, that's what 99% of all network marketing companies still teach. And, well, (laughs) 
that's maybe why 99% of people fail. There's a very small percentage of the marketplace out there that's interesting. You know, it reminds me, when I was a teacher, I was in an inner city school. I was in Patterson Public Schools, but it could have been any district that's inner city. And this was a district that something like 65 to 70 percent of the of the entering freshmen failed to graduate as seniors. 65 to 70 percent dropout rate. As I said to folks, they were either on the street, dead, or in jail. And it's a shame, but that's just the nature of our inner cities. Wouldn't it only make sense to try something different? Well, if 99 percent of people are failing at something, it may not be the company, it may not be the product, it could be the approach, it could be how you're marketing it, and that's where you need to learn a little bit about marketing. And my final thought for you is, it still requires effort. It requires some time and effort. You've got to commit to it. You've got to commit to it. You've got to be willing to put the time and effort in if you believe the venture is worthy if you understand that there's risk to any venture, at the very minimum your time, your valuable time, you've got to be willing to commit your time and your effort for a period of time to determine whether or not it's truly going to succeed. With those thoughts, I'm Alan Sills. You can connect with me on Skype at alan.sills, that's A-L-A-N dot S-I-L-L-S. You can find me online at alansills.com or at rvacrossamerica.net. Anyway, Thank you much. You have a great day. And now I'm going to start packing this place up and heading west. Take care.